Token Metrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. We are live. Welcome to the Market Update Show. I'm your host, Bill Noble. If you need a roadmap in crypto and you need to make money in crypto, then subscribe to this channel. Turn on the alerts bell to get notified when we go live. If you like the content, give us a thumbs up and hit the like button. That allows us to help you and other people. Let's welcome who's coming on the stream first. Okay. Taz, as always, welcome. Jojo, Aiken. Okay. Stonk Boy, Eth, greetings. Wax, let's go. We have Kuwait, Illinois. Okay. The Caribbean, Switzerland. Okay. Flagger Beach, Florida, Liverpool. Okay. Strictly 35 Sports says LFG. Okay. People love the show and we love you. Thank you. We appreciate your viewership. Wow. Australia up late, Connecticut, Boston, Poland. Okay. California. All right. <laughs> Paris, France, Toronto, places that are cold weather. We appreciate you staying up late to be with us. All right. Now, without further ado, people, I'm getting to the point. Let's go with your market update. CPI, inflation numbers coming out in the United States. All right. We have Houston and our friends from Oklahoma, and they want to know what is the inflation strategy. So let's get to it. Around this time, I was looking for the possibility of a geopolitical event, or I was a little bit scared that something scary might happen based on some of my GAN work. Now, if the White House putting troops in Poland to spearhead an evacuation is the geopolitical event, then the world of crypto is golden. <laughs> if that's the event, if we're getting ready for an evacuation, that's a good thing. Now, of course, if Ukraine gets run over or Putin goes in and takes the two cities on the border, that might spook everybody but I don't think that's going to trigger World War III. So if that's our negative, if that's the negative event, we're good in crypto. Now let's talk about stocks. ARK, the altcoins of the stock market, totally destroyed, all right? Shorted, hated. These are high growth technology companies spearheaded by a controversial portfolio manager, manager Kathy Woods. Visionary or villain, I don't care right? I'm a crypto guy. But everyone is short these tech stocks that are in this thing, in this ETF. And if there's a short squeeze, okay, ARK could go to 95. So if the inflation number is a non-event, or if they just assume that it's terrible, but the worst is over, there could be a squeeze in ARK. And if ARK goes up, then Avalanche, Solana, Polkadot, all the big layer ones, ETH, are going to smoke higher because those coins, I think, are better tech investments than anything that's in ARC or anything that's in equities. Speaking of equities, there's S&P 500. So our friends in stocks are just now coming around to the idea that the world may not be ending in the short term. So it looks like after an end of the world end to January, February, they seem a little bit cautious about being short. Now, I want to be respectful of inflation numbers. I also don't want to be overly optimistic, right? Especially when it comes to equities, because if you ask me, equities have got more problems than crypto with inflation and the Fed, okay? Party's over over there, most likely. And if there's going to be upside, it will be in crypto, 
However, the level at 45.43 and S&P futures is worth keeping on your trading notepad to watch. Now, obviously, we will be watching 2% in the U.S. 10-year note yield. So inflation up, interest rates up, interest rates up, bad for crypto. A brief reminder, the Federal Reserve sets the overnight lending rate between banks. So when they say hike rates, that means they adjust that little overnight lending rate. And they can raise it from zero to 50 basis points to 1%. That's okay. The bond market sets the interest rates that you would get on, say, a car loan or a home loan. So the 10-year note matters more than anything the Fed does. So if the inflation number is the end of the world, the 10-year note will blow through 2%. That will create a dip in crypto. And the question is, will the 10-year calm down? And will it pay to buy the scary dip in crypto? I suspect the answer to that is yes. But we have to respect the bond market and you also have to use risk management. So I want to buy the dip on any sudden fear, not investment advice. Galaxy Digital, my favorite hedge fund stock. Okay, Mike Novogratz. All right, it went up and it came back down and filled the gap. And now it's trying to go back green again. So I like what I'm seeing from Galaxy Digital in terms of creating a possible bottom. Gaps are getting filled and this is set up to where if crypto normalizes or the inflation and geopolitical threats do not come to pass, there is upside here if this gets above 19. Okay, let's talk Bitcoin. Bitcoin has support at 41K. This is the Bitcoin futures contract. Okay, if the Bitcoin futures contract holds 41K, there is a very distinct possibility that it turns right around and explodes. So if they fill this gap and buyers are down there, okay, then that's in a signal that it's going to go much higher. Now, over on my Twitter, I did some GAN work where I have 45K as resistance. So, you know, 45K may be resistance and altcoins may do the work on the upside if there's a rally in February. Okay, I have a tweet also on my Twitter from Santiment that basically says, do you think it's alt season? And 80% of the people says no. Okay. I say, yes. I say, if you're going to make money in crypto, do it with tokenmetrics.com, do it with the token metrics, YouTube page and do it in February. Right? In other words, if there's no apocalyptic dip, or if there is a dip, then LFG, let's talk about total crypto market cap excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum, total three on trading view. This chart is geared towards anyone out there who's like, oh my God, I missed it. I'm looking for a YouTube video. I missed it. I don't know what to do. I know I want to be long. I know I want to make money, but I don't know what to do. I'm too scared. Totally get it. Totally get it. Now, there's a bearish pattern on this chart. I'm not going to go through the whole long story. It was bearish. Now, because of the rally, okay, particularly if the market is green at the end of this week, then this chart will flip from very bearish to very bullish. So if you're like, well, I don't know what to do now. The inflation number is coming out, and I don't know if I know what to do around the inflation number, then that's kind of like a double what do I do, okay? Okay. Well, if it's green at the end of this week, there may be a lot more green. You know, Avalanche is at 90 something. No reason why I can't go to 150. Not investment advice. Solana is still radically underappreciated given that it's got the NFT story. Okay. So, yeah, I know venture capitalists have heavy bags, but once guys get done selling, we've seen this, saw it in Axie Infinity. We saw it all over the place. Saw it in Gala. Once everyone gets done selling, right, what happens? Boing, it goes up. So altcoins, layer ones, DeFi even, Chainlink. Why is everybody giving up on this stuff? And if you've missed it, well, what have you missed? You haven't missed anything. Chainlink was, I don't know, what was it? Chainlink 24? 
you know, Solana was at 220. It's now at 116. You're not too late. You're not too early. You're right on time. Okay. You want to quote something? You want to write something down? You want to be like, okay, not too early. I'm not too late. I'm right on time. If you can get that internally, like if you can internalize that, then you can make money in February. Okay. Ethereum has resistance at 3,400. That resistance may be stout in the short term. So I wouldn't discount that you get major volatility in ETH between, say, 3,000 and 3,500 when these inflation numbers come out. Okay. Now, that said, if when all is said and done, if ETH is above 3,500, then it's probably going right to 4,000 and it could go beyond that. So if you get a dip in ETH to 3K, that could be last chance shopping, assuming no apocalypse from inflation. Now you also have to accept the fact that in ETH, there may be no dip. I haven't talked much about this. I know the numbers coming out. And I know I've said on YouTube and other places that if there's going to be a dip, this is when you're going to have it. Now, of course, if the whole world knows that and there's no dip, then the bull market trade becomes more difficult. Everybody thinks bull markets are like, oh my God, it's so easy. We just all kick back. We have an umbrella drink. No, bull markets are hard. They scare you. You're like, oh God, you know. Uh, you know, if it dips, the dips are scared. If it smokes higher, then you're like, oh my God, I'm too scared to buy it. Don't be afraid, right? Just don't be afraid. Read the chart, look at the levels. If Ethereum is above 3,500, then Ethereum is being burned and it's the currency of culture and it's getting ready to smoke higher. If ETH goes to 3K, then, you know, you can buy a dip. Right, not investment advice, but if it starts working after you buy the dip, then you can start adding to your position. Right, if you can buy a dip and make money, it's a bull market. Avalanche, anybody notice that Avalanche was uh, going up yesterday as the market was going down? I did. Avalanche can do that. Our guy Medi is talking to, I believe, some senior person from Avalanche right now for his 100x show. Medi knows a lot about how Avalanche is not your average layer one, just like Nier. So I get the sense that this Avalanche trade, everyone was like, oh, okay, yeah. It was like the hot trade and then it's not hot. And that always happens in crypto. You know, everyone piles in and piles out and moves to the next thing. Well, wait a second, wait a minute. Okay. I don't think that applies to Avalanche. I know, right? And I think people are going to be really sorry if Total 3's trading signal, right? The technical signal coming from the altcoin market cap chart is correct, which as of now it is. You got to start asking yourself. You got to do a little reverse engineering. You got to say, all right, well, if Total 3 is going to go up, what in this list of altcoins is going to drive total three? So if we look at the universe outside of Bitcoin and Ethereum, what do we have? AVAX, Solana, Polkadot, right? In other words, if we're going to add, you know, build a Decentraland, Sandbox, if we're going to add, you know, market cap in billion dollar chunks, What's out there, right, that's worthy of market cap expansion, you know, quick, fast, in a hurry? Solana. <laughs> Look at this thing. This is like, <laughs> this is the pushed out of a car chart formation, right? At 260, they couldn't get enough. And at 100, no one was interested. Now it's sitting on a trend line at 116. I almost think this is like so unappreciated. I don't know. Avalanche and Solana, you may not get big dips unless it's horrible. You know, Avalanche, Avalanche and Solana might be like, oh, okay, yeah, Bitcoin moved around the 5%. So what? Now, I don't want to be a cowboy, but this is the altcoin space. I do work for Token Metrics, which is an altcoin company. So, 
why wouldn't I be bullish big altcoins when no one is bullish big altcoins? No one thinks it's going up. No one talking about it. And it's sitting here looking like it wants to break out. Like, how are people not on top of this? Sandbox. Okay, yeah, Metaverse is mooning. But Metaverse has led the market more than once. On our premium customer webinar, our analyst, Michael, went through everything in the Sandbox white paper. Even did a little demonstration showing me Binance's estate in Sandbox. And I was like, wow. Now, land in Sandbox may be better than the Sandbox token, but Sandbox token does benefit from staking. And if there's going to be major market cap expansion and FOMO, right, Sandbox has been added to crack it. So if there's no dip off the inflation number, if crypto don't care, okay, then some of this stuff has the ability to go up. And again, if it dips and you missed it, then it's worth looking at, right? Anything other than the apocalypse, right, is worth looking at. have to be prepared to react particularly in sandbox in the metaverse. In sandbox, you can lean on $4.35. Now, the central land is kind of the same thing. I don't have the deep dive on sandbox's white paper like I just got in our premium customer webinar on tokenmetrics.com. But $3.20 is support in the central land. And just a reminder, I reminded everybody where layer ones could go relative to their high. I think you're going to have to start doing mathematics on where things are relative to their all-time high. So you could look at Decentraland and say, well, it was at two and I missed it because it's now at three and a half. And you're right. That is a pretty big percentage gain. You know, a dip could happen. I get it. But Decentraland's all-time high is at five and a half. Now that was extreme FOMO, but I don't think based on what's going on in total free and if crypto survives the inflation number, okay, bulls need to be ready because if you're going to make money, you got to make money in February, being long. Now, that, that's a little bit strong statement, but you've heard it, right? We said LFG, NFA, license to speculate at the bottom, and I'm staying with the idea, okay? Audius, remember we talked about Audius. Okay, every time it go down to like 80 something cents, right? You wind up regretting not owning it. Here it is at a dollar something headed for resistance at a dollar 25. This is an example of what happens when you get this like accumulation cone type of formation. Wow, let me see if I can do something on the fly. Okay, I can't draw on this particular chart of Audius, but if you look over here on the right side, okay, so I'm going to cover it and then uncover it. See how Audius is making that cone when it rallies the way it's been rallying? You know, it's like, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Well, that comes from Jesse Livermore, reminiscence of a stock operator. There's a lot of coins doing stuff like this. So the time may have come for Audius, right? In other words, if there's going to be a breakout, it's usually in things that people are not expecting. Everyone passed on Audius below a dollar. Man, this inflation number comes out and we go into alt season. I say, you got to look out, right? Okay, Ave. This is on the note of where altcoins are relative to where they were. So in the middle of December, Ave was at 337. Right now, Ave is off its high at 171. And I ask you this, what has changed? The only thing that's changed is price, right? Ave is, you know, rooted internationally. So not necessarily vulnerable from SEC regulation. I don't know about the tokenomics, but, you know, Ave is on a lot of platforms and, you know, the busy bees on Chainlink are busy 
So I don't know why everybody thinks DeFi 1.0 is completely dead. I mean, all of DeFi may not rally, but something is going to emerge because it looks like, you know, Olympus and time were a bit of a mess. So I'm just sort of wondering like, hey, if it's NFTs, if it's Metaverse, if it's Bitcoin and Ethereum, what about DeFi? Right? It's like, oh, I missed it. All right. Well, maybe you did. But there's value investing opportunities because it still is a market of cryptos rather than the crypto market. Not everything rallied. Okay, yeah, this is off its lows, but it sure as hell isn't back where it was in December. Okay, you're in finance. I probably should shut up about this, but I can't control myself. <laughs> I'm looking at this and I'm like, God, how come no one's buying this? It's at 25K. It was at 40K in January. I mean, God. I mean, is the whole concept of DeFi really going away? I mean, do you want a, a, a marginal interest rate in Europe? Do you want to own a 10-year government bond that, yeah, maybe it could give you 2%, but 2% sucks. And the price of the bond might go down if rates go higher. So why is it everybody put money in DeFi? What happens if the buy? We talked about this after the Fed, right? We said, all right, the printing press is still on. And the market was like, oh, 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 no, no, no. How did that work out? Everyone was like, gee, what's the problem here? It goes up. Everyone's like, oh, yeah, DeFi, blow that off. And then everybody goes, wait a minute. How are we going to get protection from inflation? Oh, we're going to go into DeFi and get 5 to 7%. At least that'll keep us even with inflation. How come no one's talking about this? Well, what's the best time to talk about it? When no one's talking about it. DYDX. Okay, it's up 10% today. I don't want to be a moon boy, but D DYDX up 10% the day before a big number's coming out means that I think that there's speculative froth building in the market, meaning people get it. They want to speculate. License to speculate is in effect. Kind of hoping PERP joins in. PERP is a heartbreaker. Bottom line is, DYDX going up is constructive. Phantom, another thing everyone seems to have forgotten about. This was a hot DeFi play. A lot of what we call the mercenary capital was running over to Phantom. Okay. And then that sort of stopped. And Phantom is kind of trapped in the middle of its range. If there's support at 207, if it breaks out above 248, it may just keep right on going. Because I have no idea unless I've missed something, feel free to comment if I've missed something, why it is that no one wants to talk about DeFi. Like DeFi is like, it's not that DeFi is dead. It's like DeFi is like not talked about at all. What happens if everybody goes, you know, we should talk about DeFi. This, these things are going to just, they're going to smoke to the upside. Like you got to put a stop in. You got to be diversified and manage risk. I'm just wondering about what your allocation to DeFi is, right? What happens if DeFi on Bitcoin becomes a thing? Now, that doesn't necessarily favor Phantom, but I do think there's a DeFi narrative. And of course, at tokenmetrics.com, there's no better place to look to try to find these things because our analysts will look for it. Now, KDA, I know we got a whole bunch of people who are super psyched about this. Nice bottom at six. Now it's at 9.5. You know, it's not backing off. I, I'd say, okay, you know, KDA, buy a dip. And then I look at the chart and I go, dude, that move to six was the dip. Now that makes me sound like a moon boy, but you got to look at these speculative coins. If these big macro inflation numbers come out, stocks and bonds, if they don't care, then they're going to come FOMOing into this and attack 11. Right? Like, don't, don't doubt how much speculative fire is left in this market. Now, that doesn't mean Moon a FOMO in with the rent money today, but it does mean that you better get yourself ready. Get yourself ready. Okay. Just, just to make a point, Meta Hero. Okay. Don't know anything about the fundamentals. Could be the best coin in the world, could be the worst coin in the world, but it hasn't moved. 
It was metaverse. Everyone loved it. And then all of a sudden, everybody gave up. Why am I putting this chart up? Because there's stuff out there that hasn't moved yet. Every single coin has not moved. So if you can find something that you like, right? If you DYO our stuff, there's stuff out there that have been pushed out of a car. FTT, FTX token. Speaking of, you know, kind of like getting pumped up, there's expanding range here. FTX may also be sitting on a trend line that goes back to October. Could be a bird on a wire getting ready to fly. I think FTT looks like it wants to go to 51. I almost think this is like Avalanche where, you know, you may be looking for a dip, but you may not get one. You may not. Now, I know I said that the last time and FTT just, you know, just smoked to the downside, but came right back. So if there's going to be an exchange token, right, this could be it. This thing breaks out above 51. You know, I'm thinking substantial upside. And if you're looking at leading indicators, if Avalanche, if FTT, if the market dips and these coins don't dip, best get out the way. All right. Let's see. Uh, let's see who's here on the stream. We got uh, Port St. Lucia, Florida. All right. We have Long Island. All right. If you're from Long Island, you can pronounce the G and say Long Island. Right. Jamaica. All right. Oklahoma, Newcastle, Australia. All right. Welcome to our friends. Okay. Okay. Notice says I'm shorting now. Okay. You know, uh, we respect everybody's opinion. J eight says people have lost co confidence in Solana. Okay. Uh, somebody else says Solana keeps getting laid low with FUD. All right. That's interesting. Okay. All right. RSS, RSX and sovereign is Bitcoin DeFi from James. Okay, that's very interesting. All right. Let's let's take a look. Okay, people are asking for soul. J8 says, you know, KDA is going to blast off even harder. Interesting. The same with Dusk, someone else says. So that's really interesting, right? A lot of these coins, right, that people are you know, they used to be hot. Now they're not. Now they're coming back. All right. Oh, wait. All right. One more round of hellos. Hawaii, Texas, Alaska. Okay. The Sudan. Okay. Houston, Nigeria, Potato Land, Cyprus, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. All right. And Poland. Oh, wait, did, did I leave a slide up there? Oh, I left shop.tokenmetrics.com. All right. So rather than go through like the, the big pitch at the beginning, it's kind of like, hey, hey, get your Valentine's Day gift now. It's going to go up in February. You want to look good doing it. Oh, all right. So let, let's transition over because I know people are super hot to trot. And we got a bunch of coins people want to look at here. So let me get my chart program up and we'll start looking at it. Okay. I know we got a lot of immutable X people out there. We have a lot of stuff that people will talk about it. By the way, you know, I don't give everybody a hard time about this, but I would appreciate it if I'm doing custom TA and I'm answering your questions that maybe you can not only like the stream, but you can maybe tweet it out to your friends or put it out on social that there's a guy out there willing to do custom TA on the fly to help you, right? Not to manage that I'm basically bullish AF and I think crypto is going up in February, right? We just got to deal with the dip. All right, so let's get a screen share up here. Okay, here it is coming up. Okay, so here's FET. 
Let's see what we can draw on FET. Thinking, thinking. All right. So we know that resistance is all the way up here at 70s. So if it unwinds its give up trade, that's one level it could go to. So let's label this so people know what's going on. All right. And let's pick out a trend line and let's see what we got. Okay, right there. Okay, so here's what this thing is doing. This, this is called a stealth dip. There. See how the bears twist everybody up? You know, the bears all sell up here on these two candles. So there's an important lesson here, people. It's not just about FET. The bears sell, and then the bulls come back in and say, I'm buying it, which is pretty freaking impressive considering it's the day before the inflation number. I just got this creeping feeling that crypto doesn't care about macroeconomic stuff. I mean, it matters if it's, ap if it's apocalyptic, it matters. But if it doesn't matter to crypto, right, starting tomorrow or starting whenever, then crypto is going up, okay? Now, okay, VRA is doing something similar. So you've got this breakout from this bullish downward sloping wedge, right? So this is very similar to what was going on over here, okay? Like they try to push it down, push it down, push it down, and then when they let go, it pops up. So, you know, what's going on here in VRA, you know, the last time it did something like this, it smoked to the upside. So I'm not a, I don't know a lot about this coin fundamentally, but, you know, like this chart to me seems constructive. Like I can't wait until I can stop talking about, you know, dip buying strategy. I'm really looking forward to the fact that, you know, when all this stuff is over, I'm kind of hoping we can just go back to, you know, just buy it, right? Because again, if you're going to make money in crypto, you got to make money in crypto now, right? Seriously, it's not investment advice. It's just technical analysis of what's happening, right? In other words, you know, in a weird world, if the market is giving you an opportunity to make money, you have to take it. Right. And to sit around and say you missed it, no, no bueno. Okay, so here's Wu. All right. Now, when you have stuff like this that has not traded well, I, I don't know about necessarily FOMOing in on the way up. So let, let me see if I can make a slight adjustment to this trend line. Okay, so I think the conclusion that I'm trying to reach here in Wu is that we may be looking at a situation where bears kind of took control and bulls may be trying to come back in and buy it down here around 70 cents. So if I'm looking at Wu and I'm like, all right, if 70 cents is the level and the inflation number comes out, and bears are kind of getting out. I mean, you can't blame anybody because you got bag holders in this. I mean, this thing totally crashed. You got to give people who are trapped room to get out and not take it personal, right? And it was when you read a chart, you're like, oh, okay, well, people are selling at 80 cents. This thing went from 90 to 50. I mean, wouldn't that scare you? Imagine if that was the money to pay your taxes. You know, it's like, damn. Right. You got to give those people some room to get out. But the thing is, buyers are taking it from them on top of a trend line. This number comes out tomorrow. And if no one cares, this is the same story as everything else. Right. A lot of this stuff, you know, frankly, it looks good to me. It looks good. You know, I, I mean, the thing that's at resistance is Bitcoin. Bitcoin's got resistance at 45K. These altcoins, like when we dive into this stuff, you know, this doesn't look bad to me. Now, Immutable X, okay, you know, 
the wild, wild west. One minute it's at $2, the next minute it's at four. I think in Immutable X, okay, if you have an eight hour chart, I think you want to see Immutable X above the 62% retracement of the recent rally at 287. So the way I would handle this, not investment advice, is that if you saw Immutable X pop through 287 and stay there, then you could be like, all right, you know, it's game on. Okay. You know, if not, then just relax, right? And there was anybody who fought, it did not pay to FOMO into this here. Everybody who FOMO'd into this move has lost money. So just let Immutable X do its thing and get above 287. If that happens, then it's good to go, right? You know, if not, you know, you want to manage risk accordingly because everything is not going to go up at once and some stuff may not go up at all. In other words, it's very important to be in the right coins, obviously, right? Obviously. So, okay, we have Pond. Okay, this is interesting. I'm not an expert in this, but when I look at this chart, I'm like, hmm, no, do, do we have, do, do I sense bulls subtly taking control here? Like, a, are they trying? Let's, let's, let's go to like a, four, like a four hour chart. Let's see what they're doing. Okay, this is very reflective. You know, I know this is like, like, I know people want like, should I buy or sell? I, I get that. Thought leadership is important. Okay. So this is a level where Pond broke down from. So right here, okay, I'm sorry, it broke out from. So there was a, a break out from that level and there was a break down from this level. And that level right now is 49, right? No, uh, 0.049 cents. So just underneath five cents right here. Now, this is the type of a coin where I don't know a lot about it, but this may not be sensitive to macroeconomic news. Okay. So if you're whole, you know, and this give up trade is epic. So if this coin is no good, it's no good. But if there is a positive reason or there is a catalyst in a coin like this, then again, you know, look at what they're doing down here. They wrecked it and they've been making a base since mid-January. And we talk about the bigger the base, the higher in the space. And let's see if I can draw it online. You know, this is really demonstrating that technical analysis, you know, is a subjective discipline. Okay. Now for anybody who's involved in this, it's arguable that this is a teacup and handle. That's arguable. And teacup and handle, okay, you know, it, th this formation is debatable, but hey, teacup and handle has been a bullish formation at the bottom of every decline, right? This is a, a, a form of the bigger the base, the higher in the space. Is that perfect? Uh, no. But I'm seeing, I'm seeing reason to be bullish on smaller altcoins. Again, if the market doesn't get wrecked tomorrow, it's going up. Not investment advice. Okay, Curate versus Tether. Okay, let's go to a daily chart. Okay, I've definitely looked at this before. And again, it's this idea that the market is trying to make some kind of a bottom. Okay. In this case, it looks like a head and shoulders bottom on the daily chart. So let me pull down this content and focus this in. Right. So what's a head and shoulders bottom? Well, if a market, if they push it down and then they make a new low and they push it down again, and, and, but it comes back and then the bears over here on this shoulder, you know, they push it down here. Whoops. So they try to kill it here and bulls counterattack. Then they really try to kill it and they make, they make a new low 
but then it comes back and then bears get angry and they're like, damn it, this time we're going to crush it. And the bulls go, sorry, no. And they give him the karate kid, Mr. Miyagi kick in the face and bears are like, oh shit, we have to cover. And then you get the breakout from this formation. Now, undoubtedly, everybody on the stream has no idea who the Karate Kid or Mr. Miyagi is, but that's okay. That's okay. It's a good movie, and it's good to watch the day before a big number. We used to do that. You watch a, you watch a, a good motivational movie, whatever this is, it looks like bulls are starting to take control. And there's a theme, which is why you know on-demand technical analysis, which gets you to hit the like button, is really important. Okay, now, Soul, I know we got big fans of this out there. Okay, I'm looking at support at 189. I know this is NFTs and gaming. Okay, so here's how I would look at Soul, right? This was the range, okay? And it broke outside the range when people gave up here. And I call that a liquidity. In other words, everyone packed it in. Everyone packed it in. They said, okay, that's it. Okay, it's a double top. It's bad. But what it really is, most likely, is a very plain vanilla correction. A, B, C. Because if you, like, zoom in on the price action, you got this huge uptrend, right? Now, let's see what the retracement gain gives us on this, right? Here's the Fib retracement. And let's see what it tells us. Oh, look, look, you know, I'm always talking about the 62% retracement. Well, what do you know? They took it below the 62% retracement, which is at $1.60. They took it below that. They scared everyone, stopped everyone out. <gasps> Imagine that in crypto, right? <sighs> Please. Okay. They stopped everybody out here. And then they brought it back above 160. And what happened when they brought it back above 160? Buyers flooded in. More importantly, people were willing to pay higher prices. So I know if you're interested in Seoul and you have it in your, you have it in your book, you're like, oh, wow, super interested in this chart. But if you don't have Seoul, right, and you have other coins, the question is, are people willing to pay higher prices? If they are, okay, it's game on. All right, Casper, I know people are just suffering in this thing. People are just suffering in this thing. Let's see what is going on. All right, so here's what I'm going to tell people in Casper, right? Something is going on here. In other words, this is either a bear flag or an accumulation cone. It kind of depends on how you want to draw it, right? Is Casper in an accumulation cone? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if this is the prelude to another collapse or this is the start of something positive. I got an idea. Let's, let's assume the glass is half full in Casper rather than half empty. And here's why. Right? I mean, seriously, how much more can they kill this thing when they take it from 10 cents down to seven? Right? In other words, is it okay to assume that whatever damage has been done to this has been done? Now, obviously, this project's got problems, right? But if you believed in it and you still held it, it may be worth it to see if this actually is an accumulation cone. It, if the market wakes up, that this might be one of the value plays that wakes up. So if you've suffered, okay, you have to manage risk. You may have to tax loss, sell it, blah, 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 blah. You know that. But maybe it's time to ask, what happens if I'm right? What happens if it is, in fact, time to buy Casper? I'm willing to be optimistic here. I'm willing to look at the bright side. Honestly, I am. 
Okay, so let's see what we got going on on the stream. What's going on in the comments? Okay. Okay, Driftless Crypto is happy. Okay, that's good. Okay, people are asking, what about Rose? Justin is with me on the Karate Kid and Rocky. I've been on a huge Creed kick lately. I actually picked up, I picked up the soundtrack, okay, for Creed. That's been my like motivational music. I play that in the morning when I look at crypto, before I look at crypto and I say to myself, all right, you know, is this thing going to be down 10% when I open up my phone? Usually play a little Creed music first. Okay. So let's, let's take a look at Rose. This will be like our final request. We definitely want people to subscribe to the channel and stay tuned. Okay. I know we talked about this yesterday on the stream. One of our fundamental guys is very intrigued by this. It's kind of been his pick in a way, not investment advice for a while, but I think it's important in rows. Let, let, let's go to like, say, let's go to, let's be radical and let's go to an 89 minute chart. Okay. So this is the 89 minute chart of rows. And what are we seeing? What we're seeing is higher lows, right? And every time this thing goes down, right? There's someone down here buying it. Okay. So on February 6th, on February 4th, 6th and the 8th, people were buying the dip. So you got three big dips. Actually, it was the second, the, the second, whoops. Okay. In rows, they were down here on the second, they were down there on the fourth, they were down there on the 6th. They were down there on the 8th. And oh yeah, tomorrow's the 10th. So I know that's a little spurious as they say. But the point is, there's people buying the dip. So when you drill into altcoins, you actually see, you actually see when you drill into altcoins, it's one reason to watch the show. In other words, you can cover the big coins and tell you that they're undervalued, or I can tell you, that, you know, they seem beat up. I don't think I do undervalued. I'm a technical guy, but I can say they're beat up relative to their highs. But then when we do the inquiries from the customers, right, we see that there's buying going on in smaller altcoins. What does the inflation number have to do with smaller altcoins, especially if it's already been priced in? We know what the Fed's going to do in March. They're going to hike the funds rate and probably print a little less money. So what? Right? So what? Unless there's an invasion or inflation goes to 15%, people may be like, you know what? I'm tired of this trade. Markets get tired. It's tough to be negative all the time. It is. Doom, gloom, doom, gloom. Crypto's like, you know what? We're not doing this anymore. I'm not doing this after tomorrow. I don't even want to talk about the dip anymore. You know what to do. I've discussed it. There's a video about it. Ironically, no one watched it, right? Which is okay. Right? Because what do we want to talk about? We want to talk about the upside. We want to talk about risk management. You want to talk about buying the dip. Don't blow off the inflation number. But I can't wait till the inflation number is over with. Because if it's not the apocalypse, I'm getting on this thing for two weeks. I'm getting on this thing every day for two weeks. And I'm just going to be like, right? I think February is the time to make money in crypto. All right, folks. That is going to be it for today right? I really appreciate everybody being on the stream. I am here all week. Okay. I will be here tomorrow and Friday. So hell or high water token metrics will be with you. I'm your host, Bill Noble. I will see you tomorrow. Thank you.